I'm Paul Shawnier. I'm the editorial page editor of the Day newspaper, and I'm joined today by my colleague, news columnist David Collins. And we're going to be talking about a topic which uh, I know is getting a lot of attention up at Hartford at the Capitol, and that is the uh, the unusual and uh, and uh, sort of unhappy situation involving State Senator Andrew Maynard. Uh, if you've been reading the day in the day dot com, uh, you know that Senator Maynard uh, suffered uh, an accident in July when he he fell down some stairs and uh, suffered a, a serious head injury. Uh, and that was in July. He hasn't been seen publicly since. Uh, despite that fact, uh, on the election November 4th, the voters overwhelmingly uh, re-elected him uh, to his state senate position from the 18th district. And the question arises now, uh, what happens if he is unable to serve? Uh, there's a swearing-in schedule for January 7th for all uh, the lawmakers. And David, you recently wrote about the question, you know, what if uh, Senator Maynard can't take the oath of office? What might happen? Yeah, there's a clear indication, uh, sense, I think, from um, um, the fact that we haven't seen um, the senator um, since his accident, that uh, it's not clear that he's going to be able to take the oath of office. And, and I put the question out to some people um, in Hartford who um, should have some answers to that. And I, I think, um, ultimately, it's probably going to be have to be a decision um, or a, a consideration made by the attorney general um, as to what happens in is he physically able to take the oath? And if he doesn't, does that mean he's not um, um, sworn in and, and able to carry out the duties of his office? Um, is he an employee of the state? I mean, these are all questions, legal questions, that need to be examined. Yeah, and you know, there's normally, of course, the, the senators and the, and the House members, they take the oath of office at the Capitol part of a ceremony. Um, you know, but there's a potential we could have a swearing in take place at the uh, convalesce at acute care facility where the senator is, is now s staying and you know we've asked for interviews to, to meet with the senator and uh, the, you know the family has declined. I know another issue that's uh, being talked about at the Capitol is, uh, is Senator Maynard uh, was to complete this term his fifth uh, ten years he then qualifies for retirement benefits and probably more importantly for the situation uh, for health benefits and some questions should the uh, the legislature through some special act uh, uh, sort of add two years to his tenure if he's unable to serve and allow him to obtain these benefits. And I know in, in our editorial on Sunday, while we, uh, we could see that as being a sort of a charitable work, a charitable thing to do, we don't think it's fair because it sort of gets special treatment to a, a, a legislator or something that's prohibited by the Constitution. Uh, what are your thoughts on that yeah, uh, situation? I mean, that's a, certainly a slippery slope. Uh, to kind of um, to break out a particular person, or in this case, a lawmaker with influence uh, in the legislature, and give him special privileges and benefits, I think is is really unacceptable to almost everyone. I think voters gave um, the family, um, Andy Maynard's family, um, uh, kind of the benefit of the doubt when they suggested that he may recover and and be able to take the oath of office. And and uh, I think he was a well liked and respected legislator, and people were willing to kind of. See him through to that period of time. It gave him a few more months from the election. But I think if January 7th rolls around and he can't uh, appear uh, and take the oath of office as the other legislators can, and, and if it comes down to sort of a, um, you know, an oath and uh, that's not clearly um, his will in the, hotel, in the hospital room, I think that's a, that's a, um, a much more uh, troublesome thing. And I think people will kind of begin to be concerned about that. And then there's a question really, I mean, the best thing, of course, is if he turns up on January 7th, takes the oath of office, and we'd all love to see that, especially all the people who voted for him. But um, if he doesn't, and then he can't, if, he, if he's not able to resign, um, uh, there's no provision really to remove him from office. So it, it then kind of becomes a more complicated uh, issue. And I, I think it's one that certainly the Attorney General is going to have to be, I, I assume, is already kind of exploring as we, as we go forward. Yeah, you know, as David said, we're all hope, hoping the best case scenario would be uh, the Senator does make a recovery and is able to serve, which would make all these questions uh, moot. But uh, it's looking as time goes on that we may face them. It's a, it's a story that uh, the day is certainly are going to continue covering. Uh, you can read David's column by going to theday.com and in our editorial. And, uh, you know, keep staying in touch as we'll be following the story and see how it turns out.